It's about a young teenager. Uh, about, uh, she's 15 years old, and she discovers that she's an actual real princess. She's gauche, she's self-conscious, uh, she has no idea that she's royalty at all. Uh, her grandmother is brought in to tell her the good or bad news and uh, also to help her face her new role in the world. And it's their conflict and uh, her mother's conflict, um, it, 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 all the characters surrounding those two. Exactly. You're not just Amelia Thermopolis. You are Amelia Mignonette Thermopolis Renaldi, Princess of Genovia. Me? A, a princess? Shut up! Well, it kind of does, to some extent, hark back to that wonderful genre that, that Disney did in the old days when Hayley Mills was the young princess in those days, you know? I've always wanted to work with him. The second best being that it was a marvelous role for a lady of my age, uh, that I so enjoyed doing it, and I get to wear all these wonderful uh, clothes and expensive tiaras and I mean what what could be nicer than that Clarice hasn't seen her I think since sort of um, well she's seen photographs so it's established that uh, she has seen photographs of, of the of the child but but never seen her uh, physically in real life or, or ever since she was a baby so when she does come down the stairs of the consulate for the first time what she sees is a frizzy haired gauche bespectacled young schoolgirl who is uh, slightly rebellious and feisty and not at all as she had hoped. And uh, so she says, uh, I think she says, you look so young. And that's in every way, it reminds her of her dead son and so on and so forth, the child's father. And the child replies instantly, you look so clean, <laughs> which is another Gary line. <laughs> The whole world does shtick. It's good. The two things that were on our wish list were Julie Andrews to play Clarice. Paolo, how good to see you. Yeah. She's every little girl's dream. And Gary Marshall to direct. Yeah. Shall I just chop a chop yeah, like that? We're so glad you were available. We are so glad that you were available. They said I was the only choice for this film. That's a way to keep a price down or something. Let's not pay him. He's the only choice. We'll flatter him. Doesn't work at all. It's not don't say it this way, say it this way. But he actually will come up with one extra line uh, and, and a throwaway at the end of a scene just to give it a little punch up. So it's not actually saying say something my way. It's add this, and it'll give some little extra zing to your character. And you latch onto it, you know, I mean, it, you, you instantly see that it's exactly right. It's always exactly right. Action! Just, wow, you have your own salon? That's cool. No, it's for you. Uh, today, today is the day uh, we make you presentable for your debut. Really? We, we couldn't send you to a regular salon because of too much gossip, so we made our own. Where is Paolo? Paolo, send in Paolo, please. find an Italian version of them. I wish to. Do you know the Italian for here are or I present or? Echo, echo, echo. 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 Good. Good. Something Good. like that. Behold my yeah. Echo, echo. Anybody speak Italian? Anybody know the Italian for here, here are or I present or here are my assistants? In Genovia, yeah. he traveled around the world. Yeah, you leave yeah, the small yeah, yeah. Town, you but he is a bike. Mike's out. I have to yeah. come back. Yeah, of course. In other words, you were born in the Basque country, but you were. Yeah. You've been around the world. Yeah. And you speak a few languages. We already spoke Japanese. Okay. Daddy, bye. Lovely. Take care, Mike. Tail stick, C camera, and background. Does your Majesty, Majesty, Your Majesty, Your Highness, Your Your Highness, 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 Your Highness,
your highness. Queen, your highness. Is there pressure from the Genovians to bring the princess? princess? Princesses can't become the royal cat. Is it true you're here to buy the Golden Gate Bridge? Go, 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 go. Yes! Yes! Joy, let's do one more and do hand slip and send her a million. Okay, right. Okay. Don't say stop at the time. Why don't you make this up? Yeah, I'm going to push the button. 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 Yeah, I'm going to push I know she belongs to England, but she's ours. Julie Andrews, there's got to cast the queen. Where would you go? You know, not my sister Penny. She's we got a whiny voice sometimes. Doesn't look that good in the tiara. But Julie Andrews, a lady born to wear a tiara. Julie Andrews is quite possibly um, the most regal, elegant person alive. She's very funny, Julie so she knows where the jokes are, and she's one of the great reactors. <laughs> okay. She found humor through the elegance. We won't waste time. Let the work begin. Huh. The magic that she gave to us as little girls, she continues to give to other generations. I used to blast the sound of music and My Fair Lady and sing and sing and sing. She's been an idol of mine for pretty much as long as I can remember. I asked her to send my son a music CD. Did you? Oh my gosh, it was so, I was, oh. She has like this aura around her that just, she could say mud and it would sound nice. She's like mud. We've all, you know, become very close and they're wonderful kids, just wonderful. You know, as Gary said about at the end of the first week, this young woman, 17 years old, can carry a movie. And also, we don't want to make it like, oh, now you're pretty, let me fawn all over you. Yeah, no, 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 no. She has a kind of mixture of Audrey Hepburn and Julia Roberts in a way. And uh, she's very talented. She can dance, she can sing, she does physical comedy. I had a theory that pretty girls who don't mind flying through the air actually have a better shot at success. I know. You're I'm late. So sorry. Let the work begin. Oh, let the masterpiece begin. Where is the beautiful girl? Uh, my granddaughter, Amelia. Yes. Her grandmother comes and gives her this completely radical news. It's every little girl's dream, really. She discovers that she's really a princess, truly a princess. When somebody gets the big news, the pivotal part... You, you are Amelia Mignonette Thermopolis Rinaldi, princess of Genovia. Usually, over the years, people at that point spit food out of their mouth or water. and they're, It's called a spit take. Me? Then we thought, let's remember she was a teenager. Two, it's a Gary Marshall picture. There's no spitting. A princess? Shut up! The teenager's reaction to that usually is what Annie did in the picture, and it startles the adults. Let's face it, my experience with royals is rather limited, so. Well, obviously, we're not quite sure how you turn someone into a princess, but we, we take a few licenses okay, and we try to imagine what would be done. Come along. Now, if you get it stuck in her neck, you will just pull it out. Yeah, he's, he's just wonderful at it. Lend it well done. Uh, as I say early on in the film, I can teach you to walk and talk and sit and stand and dress and eat like a princess, and that's exactly what Grandma does. So in a way, I'm sort of the, the Henry Higgins to her Pygmalion, and uh, I do eventually bring out the young woman in her. Julie helped out a lot. <laughs> Julie is totally in charge on this picture. Is the flower this way? What kind of fork is it? Is this the right jewelry box? I have something I want to give you. Here. Oh, um, thank you. I'm sort of the female Henry Higgins, if you wish. Oh, I can give you books. You will study languages, history, art. Mia Science. doesn't know how to be a princess on her own, and so she has to be taught. The posture and manners matter and all of those things. Her posture is just horrendous, so she's taught how to sit, stand, walk, eat, all these very important things. And action. And now for the salad. Grandma, is it customary in Genovia to imprison your dinner guests with, um, with Hermes scarves? She's being tied up in a scarf against the chair so that she will sit straight. It's Hermes. The scarf is merely a training tool. Eventually, you will learn to sit and eat properly without it. So, naturally, her posture was improving, and she was learning more about herself and what made her feel good. But no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. 
Eleanor Roosevelt said that. Yes. Another special lady like yourself. Nobody really knows that they're princess until somebody touches their lives and says it. Well, as I said, I have faith in you. And that doesn't mean that they have to come from royalty. It means how you feel inside. Because I think everybody, deep down at one point or other, is lonely and would like to meet that one person who understands them. And uh, this is part of what my films do, is they say something positive about the human condition and uh, say love somewhere you can find it. I am imitated a lot. The Marshall family has a very distinctive sound. A British version of me is interesting. You know, it's all kind of like that. My mother spoke a little this way. I love you very much. But my mother talked shorthand to herself and never finished sentences. You'll go and you'll get your school, you'll get your milk, and then you'll come and we'll go. <laughs> Well, they adore him. I think they'd lay, lay down and die for him, you know. And roll it! And understandably. Who knows? She's a wild gal. But we had a good time, and they were singing, and I like to surprise him with the birthday cake. <laughs> Julie Andrews and Whitney Houston sang Happy Birthday to me, which is very rare for a director to have that. Date. Barry Levinson huddled people in Baltimore going, Happy birthday, Barry. 13th, right. my right. lucky number. Yeah, yeah. Are, we right. still, are we still filming? <laughs> still filming. Okay. Keith Bilber's got robots going, Happy birthday to you, Stephen. I had Whitney and Julie Andrews. That's pretty special for any film director. It was wonderful because it really held up to his mantra, which is there is more to life than show business. I seriously believe to create, you gotta kind of be like floating a little bit. I love coming here. And he said to me, you never know what's going to be a hit, so you might as well have fun making it. Have fun. Yeah. I so appreciate my life, but there are more important things than fame. And Gary had said something along those lines to me earlier, and it, that really resonated with me, was that no matter how successful or unsuccessful or big you get or how big you don't get, as long as you're a good person, all of that is just icing on the cake, basically. And we cut! Good! All right! Well, because it is a lovely movie, and it's uh, great to take your kids to. The grandparents can go, the parents can go. And it's funny, and it's loving, and it has a very lovely theme. Well, um, I'm going to college right now, and it's kind of hard to become heady and to believe that you're this huge movie star when you're living in a closet that's basically 8 feet by 12 feet. So that's really keeping me grounded, I think. It has a wonderful message with that nasty, rude, crude humor. And it's, it just makes you feel good. It makes you feel happy. And we have a wonderful cast. I mean, Anne Hathaway, Julie Andrews, Mandy Moore, myself. <laughs> well, that's exactly what I thought. And I think the good thing is that Dame Julie brings that. She brings an extraordinary comedic ability and gravitas to it that I think lifted the rest of us up. And Gary, of course, knows how to sell a gag. Julie is the you know, consummate queen. She speaks beautifully. She was the technical advisor. She used to say, well, if we, yeah, a queen wouldn't do that, she'd tell us. It says a Gary Marshall movie. What does that mean? It means that you have the best fun and the loveliest time making a film. The 